industrial accidents, ancient Solving poisoners, crime, poison prevention. Spills. This is Toxic History. Introducing Dr. Noah Berland, who's going to speak with you about the Minamata Bay disaster. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Adam. Uh, good afternoon, and thank you for joining me. I'd like to tell you about the story of Minamata Bay and how can't dancing cats don't lie. So it's the early 1950s, post-war Japan. Japanese industry was destroyed by American bombing in World War II. However, the industry is now booming due to the reconstruction of Japan and its industries, as this was a major focus for the U.S. to stem the tide of communism. This investment ultimately led to what would become known as the Japanese economic miracle and lead to all the present day innovations and Japanese brands we've come to know and love. Our story today takes place on the island of Kyushu in a small town off Minamata Bay. The area was ideal for industrial manufacturing, was extremely productive during this time of the ramping up Japanese economy. The local Chiso chemical plant was the heart and soul of the economy for the entire region. The first sign of trouble was when the fishermen noticed that their catches were shrinking. They then noticed bivalves were washing up on the shores, exposing their precious innards to the world. The birds that feast on them were unable to fly and found to be dying. The fishermen complained to the factory and received minimal compensation for the reduced fishing yields, but no explanation was given or any acknowledgement of fault. What truly made the locals scared was when they started to notice that many of the cats in the area seemed to be dancing. They were often later found dead or apparently jumping off the docks into the water to their deaths. This was termed dancing cat disease. It was so bad that the cats died out in the town and they started to experience an increase in the number of rats. On April 21st, 1956, a pediatrician at Chiso Hospital, the hospital affiliate with the chemical plant, Kaneki Noda examined a 12 year old girl. The girl was stumbling and she was slurring her words. She appeared to be in a drunken state. Two days later, her sister developed the same symptoms. It was then discovered through their mother that their neighbor's daughter was also experiencing these symptoms. Some of you might recognize this map. It is the famous John Snow map identifying the source of cholera epidemic in London as a, at a specific water pump. Similarly, a community-wide survey was then undertaken which identified eight more patients that required hospitalization. The he public health office was then made aware of the epidemic. The local public health department formed the Strange Disease Countermeasures Committee and by August 29th, they had identified 30 cases, including 11 deaths. Another historical note, this is a photo actually of Fred Korematsu, uh, center front following his 1983 victory in US District Court in which he, his 1944 conviction for invading internment during World War II was vacated. Initially, it was suspected that the symptoms were caused by a communicable disease. And so all affected individuals were quarantined in a small part of the town. They were then later transferred to an isolation ward in the Chiso Factory Hospital. Unaffected townspeople treated these individuals as proverbial lepers. Those who were quarantined were very unhappy with their treatment and forced isolation. By the end of the year, the committee had determined, just like Jon Snow, that incidents was almost directly related to proximity to the area of the bay where the factory discharged its effluent. They also showed that increased consumption of fish from the bay and fishermen and their families were also more likely to have the disease. They were then able to finally identify that it was likely a heavy metal from the effluent from the Chiso factory. However, Chiso refused to say what they were making or what they were using in their chemical processes. Sadly, they did not ban all fish consumption from the bay or shut down the plant. Multiple reports note that likely part of the motivation for not stopping fish consumption was related to the power of the Chiso Corporation and its economic impact on the region. However, to avoid continued problems in the bay, the factory decided to divert their effluent to the Minamata River. One physician working for Chiso who had been studying the problem himself astutely objected to this plan, noting that if cases were to then rise around the river, it would strengthen the evidence that the effluent was the causative agent, which is exactly what happened. Stymied by not knowing what was being made at the factory, researchers started testing different compounds by feeding them to cats and observing their response. There are some videos if you are interested, but they're honestly pretty horrible. So I've chosen not to show them, but you can look them up on YouTube. Initially, mercury was thought to be a potential causative agent, but was eliminated by the committee due to the cost. The researchers thinking that the factory wouldn't dump such a precious element into the bay. They began to feed various potential substances to cats to see if they could replicate the effects seen in the victims. They tried manganese, thallium, selenium, and others to no avail. It should be noted that the plant had actually done the same experiments 
and identified the cause in the same way. However, they knew what was being made and how. So it was much more easy, much easier for them to identify the actual agent, but they wouldn't tell anyone else. In March 1958, Douglas McAlpine, a British neurologist, visited Minamata. He examined 15 Minamata disease patients and made a very valuable observation, noting that their symptoms, such as constricted visual field, impaired hearing, and ataxia, clo closely resembled those of methylmercury poisoning reported by Hunter et al., and which had been termed Hunter Russell syndrome. The photo on the right is from the original Hunter, Hunter Russell paper and demonstrates the methylmercury coating on the seeds used to keep vermin away and actually plays a role in other outbreaks of methylmercury toxicity. They ended up feeding the cats water directly from the bay. In doing so, the cats started dancing, convulsing, and eventually dying, just like the cats and people in their community. When necropsies of the cats were performed, there were high levels of methylmercury and inorganic mercury in the cerebellum, cerebrum, and other organ systems. They found high levels of methylmercury in the water. As mentioned before, Chiso researchers or had already performed a similar experiment and shown the same results but never released their data to protect the factory. The entire bay was filled with methylmercury. The Chiso plant had been dumping mercury into the bay since the 1930s, the traditional source of food and livelihood for the townspeople. So why methylmercury? The Chiso plant was manufacturing acid aldehyde. Acid aldehyde is used in a number of processes, including the manufacturing of acetic acid and polyvinyl acetate, which is used for, to make coatings and glue. Mercury was used as a catalyst and methylmercury was formed as an undesired byproduct from the reaction. They'd actually changed their process in the early 50s, just before cases started to started, and this was to improve yields, but this also increased the amount of methylmercury produced and hence dumped into the bay. In January 1965, a similar methylmercury poisoning event occurred in Nagata, causing what was termed Nagata Minamata disease. The factory responsible, Showa Denko, operated in the same way as Chiso in Minamata, with methylmercury being discharged during acid aldehyde production. Although the damage was less than Minamata, over 1,500 individuals were needlessly affected. Once more, cats started dancing and dying from madness in Nagata as a harbinger to the human consequences that were to follow. One can't talk about Minamata Bay and methylmercury toxicity without mentioning W. Eugene Smith. He was a Pulitzer Prize he won a Pulitzer Prize for portraying the victims of Minamata disease, especially victims with congenital disease. There's even a new movie about the issue with Johnny Depp. Uh, I'll just say the heroes of our story are the people of Minamata, Japan, who have tirelessly advocated for themselves and their loved ones. Though Eugene Smith brought the world's eye to the issue, and they are truly heart-wrenching photos, he's not the savior or the hero of our story. A large number of children in the area developed reduced cognitive ability, decreased reflexes, dysarthria, limb deformities, hyperkinesia, hypersalivation, contractures, all of which seem very similar to cerebral palsy. This was especially seen in children of already affected families. This was suspected to be related to methylmercury, but at the time, most people believed that toxins couldn't cross the placenta. This actually delayed in categorizing those born with these congenital findings as being due to it in utero methylmercury exposure. Somewhat due to a course of luck, in Japan, there's a tradition of saving umbilical cords, which you can see here on the left. Scientists were able to examine the cords of people who developed congenital minimata disease and people who didn't. As you can see here on the right, methylmercury levels were much higher in individuals that had congenital methylmercury poisoning than when compared with controls. Methylmercury umbilical cord levels rose in the population with increasing incidence of methylmercury toxicity and production of acyl aldehyde. On the left, you can see in the, the solid line production of acyl aldehyde, and the orange dots are actually cases of Minamata disease. On the right, you see plotting out of in the empty circles methylmercury levels in umbilical cords, and in the solid circles is also a number of people with Minamata disease. You can see how closely these graphs actually would overlap with the acid aldehyde production, showing a pretty clear correlation. In 1968, a legal case relating to the poisonings in Nagata and Minamata went to trial, and the government of Japan finally agreed that there was a causal relationship between wastewater from Chiso and Showa Denko, leading to methylmercury toxicity in Minamata and Nagata. Before then, all levels of government from the local up to the federal government had likely known, but ignored the connection between the disease and the manufacturing of acyl aldehyde, leading to the dumping of methylmercury in the waters of Japan. Mm -hmm. By then, however, this admission was immaterial 
as acetyl aldehyde was no longer necessary, and production had stopped by May 1968. Twelve years had passed since the factory was identified as the source of food contamination with methylmercury, in total 488 tons of mercury discharged into the sea from 1932 to 1968. In the ruling, they created an extremely onerous process to be identified as a victim and receive damages and economic compensation. Kind of an interesting little twist, I think, was the Chiso Corporation actually hired the Yakuza to prevent people from testifying and protesting against them publicly. They actually beat up W. Eugene Smith prior to him giving testimony. It shows just how far the factory was willing to go to try and hide the cause of the entire communities and protect their bottom line. Fast forward to 1972 Stockholm at the first UN Global Environmental Conference. Scientists, politicians, and the public were shocked by the presence of two individuals from Minamata, Japan, with severe methylmercury toxicity. They were halting and unsteady. They struggled to speak. They had been poisoned by mercury in their environment. Their very presence was meant to teach the world a lesson on the dangers of mercury in the environment. In 2013, a new treaty named the Minamata Convention on Mercury, was adopted by global community under the auspices of the United Nations Environmental Protection Agency. This new piece of international law entered into force in 2017 and restricts the use of mercury as a catalyst in many chemical manufacturing processes and requires the elimination of mercury-containing products in a stepwise fashion. There are still many victims living with methylmercury poisoning in Japan um, pictured here is Masami Ogata and his daughter. There's a really great accounting of, of him, from him. It's a first person telling of his tragic story of mercury poisoning in Japan. It's by the UN News. Many victims still struggle to get government, the government to certify them as victims of methylmercury poisoning from the Chiso plant. Often people have neurodevelopment problems and aren't as severe as the worst cases, but are yet still deeply affecting their own lives. Um, Masa, this is human right. Masami Ogata tells the story of his father developing and subsequently dying from methylmercury poisoning and his own struggles as a victim himself. The disease is called by many Minamata disease, but many of the victims have fought to remove that label due to the stigma. So just calling it methylmercury poisoning or toxicity is generally preferred by them. If you have any questions, please let me know now. Uh, this is actually a photo of the Minamata Memorial in Minamata, Japan. The 108 quote unquote mercury balls that you can see there are on the site give visitors a sense of as though they were rolling into the sea. It's supposed to remind us to stay vigilant just like the mercury that went into the sea. Thank you. These are my references.